Hello and welcome to another episode from Nick's Projects. I'm Nick and guess what? I'm doing another project. So today I'm taking my tribute, uh, my Auto Trail tribute T669 and I'm going to seriously upgrade the stereo. This is the standard stereo that you get on, um, well, a 2017 model uh, Fiat Ducato based vehicle. Um, and it's a really good stereo. There's nothing wrong with it. It's got Bluetooth built in and all the rest of it, but no GPS, very limited on what you can do with it and with upgrades. And it's not the best sounding stereo. If you've got one of these, um, you'll see, sadly, I've already taken this one out, of course, and I've upgraded to an Apple CarPlay unit um, much earlier when I first First got the van but today I'm doing the rest of the upgrade and you will see exactly what's involved with that upgrade as I go. Also I will post links to the Apple CarPlay unit I decided to go with which has also off, uh, offline um, or, or off 4G GPS functionality. It, it's got a DVD player built into it, it's absolutely brilliant um, but what it's lacking is, is sound, we'll come to that in a minute. So yeah I wanted to show you that because if you've got one of these you'll know that that's kind of the loom. This is the Fiat uh, 250 VP1 ROW, um, there's all the details for it. In fact I'll take some some photographs and we'll, we'll cut to those now um, so you can see exactly the model that this is so you can identify that it's exactly the one you've got so you know you can follow this step-by-step -step procedure and it will all be straightforward right so what am I going to do now these vans come with reasonable speakers in the in the doors and even at dashboard height but they have no bass frequency response whatsoever it's a very tinny sound fine for listening to a bit of radio if you're a delivery driver but if this is your motorhome and you want to park up and listen to some good quality audio then you've got to do a few upgrades now these units i've got two of these that i just had in the back of my garage and these are very old school 100 watt active subwoofer systems now these back in the day were about a hundred quid Obviously these are now um, obsolete. So what I'm gonna do is post links to a unit that will work in exactly the same way, will wire in a very similar fashion and you'll see exactly the step-by-step -step process on how to do that. So I'm gonna fit one of these, but bizarrely I had two of them in the back of my garage. So I've got two here today. Um, and I'm just gonna see, yeah, whether one's still working. I might need parts from the other, whatever. Um, they come with a little remote control um, and the remote control just turns it on and off and allows you to to adjust that bass sound. Um, and they come with this wiring loom, um, which is very standard. I think with this, it's just gonna be a simple um, bass connection from the back of my head unit, a power connection, and then I, I should be up and running with that. Now, the other thing I'm gonna add is some rear speakers. Now, these are really basic. Um, you probably remember these. I've actually resprayed this. I'll show the whole procedure later. This used to be silver. It was a Goodman's shell speaker unit probably manufactured in the late 90s. Very old bit of kit, again at the back of my garage. And again, because these things aren't available anymore, what I am going to do is post some links in the description to a modern equivalent that would work in exactly the same way. And I will show you how I prepped this, took it apart, sprayed it with some um, plastic coat spray, just to make sure that it, it, fit, it matches the interior a bit better than the horrible kind of late 90s silver plastic with blue Goodman's writing all over it. I don't expect these to be high fidelity sound, but they will just give that bit of backfill. And also the kiddies sitting in the back often can't hear the audiobooks we're listening to or sing along to the songs or whatever else. This will fix that. So that's what I'm gonna do. By the end of today, I'm gonna to have bass speakers, rear speakers, seriously upgraded sound, and you're gonna to get to see how I do it. Right, first things first, mounting locations. I'm gonna start at the rear and move forward with this project. Now I fitted this TV when I first bought the camper van. Um, and the problem with it is the bracket is a slide up bracket. So whatever I do, if I slide up, I'm gonna have a problem. But this is clearly to me, the ideal place for my color coded speakers. So I want to slide a couple of them in here right above where people sit at the back. It will provide nice sound to this rear area. They're not in the way, you're not gonna bang your head on them and I can easily get two in here. Now, the speaker wire, I'm gonna run behind the TV and through this existing trunking. Now, let me uh, just lift that one out and I'll show you what I mean. So if I just lift the TV forward, there we go. 
So yes, you can see here, I've got a little bit of trunking here. I wish I'd sprayed this to color code it, but that's a job for another day. I'm gonna run just the speaker wires through there and then I'm going to run them across under the curtains and towards the front of the van. As always, I'm going to use lots of tape and cable ties because what I don't want is a solution where things fall off when you're going down the road. Um, every time I do any project, if you've seen any of my other videos, I really kind of go for belt and braces to make sure nothing falls apart. I over tape every join and everything else. It's just the way I do stuff because I don't want to do it again. So that's my plan. First job, let's get the speakers in and let's get those wires ready to run to the front. So every van's going to be slightly different unless you have a Trigano T669. Um, but my obvious place is to run the wire through here, as we've discussed, and then behind here. So this just removes with Velcro along here. So that will be easy to put back. And then there's these little guides. These little guides here just have a popper on them, so they're easy to take off. Oh, switch the lights on by mistake. Okay, so that reveals that. I expect, well look, the wire's clearly gonna go behind there. So I might actually be able to work with this in situ. I don't know if I want to take this off. If I can help it, how is it attached? Oh, it's just two Phillips head screws. I could take it off. Right, so I'm gonna bring the wire from the front forward, I've decided, because once the speakers are up there, I can make the connections, but the TV has to be in situ before I do that. So. I'm now going to remove this. Well, things never go quite to plan, do they? That's, that's always the way when you're working on anything like this. So um, for a start, it's turned out that little bit of trunking under the TV, if you just turn this way, was way too small to accommodate two new wires, the coax for the TV aerial and the 12 volt supply to, the, to that. So I've, I've removed that trunking and I'm going to get some new trunking in there. I'm going to spray it up with the same plastic coat spray I use for the speakers so it all ties in nicely. So while that's drying off, that's just there. And I've created this kind of, yeah, I suppose, rectangular loom, if you like, um, with everything stacked so it fits nicely inside that trunking when it comes back. Then I've run the wires, this will all be hidden by the curtain, this horrible bit of tape, um, behind here. Now there's a void in this, uh, in this curtain runner um, that, that's perfect to slide the wires in. So the wires are in and I've just created like postage stamp sized bits of tape to hold them in there all the way along. Lots of separate runs while, rather than one long one. So if one bit does come unstuck, hopefully the whole thing won't come down. Then the wires got to this stage so far. So we're going to have our speakers up there. Speakers will go in before, after the TV's mounted back on and after the trunking's installed. Now I'm going to drill a hole through here into this area. I've removed just two screws from this pillar cover and that allows me to poke my fingers in here or long nose pliers, pull those wires through. Then I'm up here at the front into the door rubbers. I can run it down the door into the dashboard area and then this tricky fiddly bit's done. It's a really hot day today. I think the weather's meant to peak at 32 degrees this afternoon. So uh, excuse the perspiration. Um, I hope I'll be able to last this job today. It's getting so hot in here. I've already got a little fan running. Um, but yes, you've just got to use the time you've got to do these projects, right? So always scary drilling. So I just go very slowly, get it started because I don't want to rip any of my interior or oh, I'm making a bit of dust here, but not too much. Now we have to go because we've got to get through the plastic. And that feels like we're in. Yeah, that's a nice tidy hole. And we are through the plastic so I can poke the wire straight through. We'll only see a tiny glimmer of red and black wire. By the time it's got a bit of grey tape on it, you won't even see that. Okay, so things are moving along now as to plan. So I've put in some slightly thicker trunking, but I've used the same plastic coat spray I used on the speakers, which isn't an exact match to this interior, but it's a lot softer than a bright white plastic tube, right? So I've got that in there. Um, they're brilliant, that plastic coat. Sprayed it, within 50 minutes it was touch dry, which was enough for me to fit it back in there. The blind's back in place now, but I've now got that wire using that sights tape that I've, um, Scarpa tape, sorry, um, behind here all the way along. It's a totally, totally hidden job. So even without this curtain, it's, it's actually tucked in. So it's, it's totally hidden. And then that comes along here, 
simple drill hole through there and now I'm right down at the dashboard in the front. So my next job now, TV's back in position, is to locate the holes to fit my two speakers. They're going to go in, get them connected up to here and then everything else will happen at the front of the van. Making real progress here should be done by lunchtime. Right, now it's time to install the speakers above the TV set. Now this is gonna be a bit of a fiddle because the way these particular speakers attach, it's gonna be similar with uh, the, the speakers that I'll, I'll post links to, is there's a screw fixing on the back of these ones here. Um, so what I've done is take a bit of masking tape with a small screw on it, popped the small screw into that hole, put the masking tape on so I can slide the speakers into position, line them up exactly where I want them, and then mark that spot just by pushing back, creating a little dimple in the wooden board. Then I can take a cross measurement from the top to the center of the screw and make sure that they're perfectly aligned in both places. It's more to do with the left and right alignment um, than the height, because height, it's a real squeeze up there. So that's, that's the, really the only thing I can do. Um, so if you look up here now, you can see I've got an X on one side and a little mark on the other, um, and that's exactly where they're going to go in. They don't look straight. Uh, it's a trick of the eye because this is going up, of course, um, but when they're in, uh, it should look correct, I hope. Okay, so the first speaker is in. This is going to be different for every job, of course, but in this particular install, you can just see that threaded bolt is coming through from the shower room. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and the next one's going to go in, but that's in absolutely firm. I've really tightened that back. Um, the wires are all nicely hidden behind it, really pleased with the colour. And uh, yeah, I think it's a perfect match for this interior. Um, so now I'm going to fit the second one. It's a bit of a fiddle, I'm not going to lie to you, because you can't really get a good eye level at, where, at the depth of this thing and the back, so you have to shuffle it round a bit and hope not to scratch the speaker too, too much in the, in the meantime. But so far, so good. So there they are, the magic of editing. Both of them are fixed very firmly in position with the single bolt tightening them against this panel into the shower room. They're also trapped in place by the TV in this particular install. This is gonna be different in every single van. I know I keep saying that, um, but I do think it's worth whatever speakers you go for to, to color code them. If that was another, you know, I've got a big black thing here in the TV. If they were two big black speakers or silver or bright white, it would annoy me. I like it that they're, uh, they're color coded. And as you can see around the back here to hide the screws in the shower enclosure, I've used these little beige screw caps so they match the existing caps in the shower area. So again, really a, a pretty much invisible finish. Okay, so up front, you can see I've removed the original stereo and put in this unit. Now, I would highly recommend this unit. It is brilliant. The way this comes out is incredibly simple. So if I pull up this, flap here. This is this. Oh, I have to open these a bit. I've got these shut because they really do keep the heat out. I fitted these myself, but there's so many videos on YouTube showing you how to do this. Um, yeah, someone else can show you how to do that. Yeah, this just pulls forward here. You get varying different surrounds, but I went with a quite a simple one. Here we go. Come on out, you come. There we go. Right, now I can fold that back down again. And the whole unit comes out like this. And this is what I needed. I need to put a towel or something over these parts because all of the connections at the back here are what I need to access and then poke the wires down. I'm gonna sight my uh, subwoofer just beneath here, bring in those speaker wires somehow into this void. So this is gonna be a fiddly old stage, but if you're working on one of these vans, this is the bit that could be really useful to you. Um, and I'll show you those wires as we go, but a lot of it's gonna be just tracing wires. Okay, so we've got the wire coming through here behind this little curtain, through that little gap there, you can't even see it, into here, I removed these two screw screws on the driver's door pillar, pulled it forward, which enabled me to pull the wire through there. You can see this is quite baggy. It then goes into this seam, there it is, follows all the way down around the window, down here, and then at this point, just down here, it comes under the dash and that's where I am at the moment really. So it comes under the dash and there's various wiring looms here that I've run the wire behind. So there's no chance of it falling down in that section. Now from here to here, this section 
I'm going to have to use the scarper tape to hold it in place. I'm also going to pull it taut. The next thing I've got is this little void just by the foot pedals here. Now that void is a direct link to the back, this cavity behind the stereo. So all my wires are going to go up there. I've decided that this unit, my base unit, is going to go just here. I've taken the mat out because I didn't want to get it dirty uh, and I've marked where I'm going to, going to actually put this thing down and I've checked that I can drill into that. This is a battery cover on the Ducatos, just lifts up so I'm going to, I'm going to pre-drill it so I know I'm not going to drill into the top of my battery or anything horrible and then refit it just with some, some short uh, Phillips head screws, some self-tapping screws. That will sit on top of the carpet. All the connections to this unit, my subwoofer input from the back of my stereo and the power connections will then also go into this little void just at the side back to the head unit. A little side job that I'm going to do, I think I told you earlier, is I fitted this on the back. Can you see here I've intercepted both the ignition live and the permanent live and I'm going to run that to a little push switch and I haven't decided the mounting location of the push switch yet but it will be when I press the push switch in it will give permanent power even if the ignition isn't on so that will be ideal I mean obviously you don't want to leave it on for too long because you would run out your van battery rather than your leisure battery but it's just nice sometimes to have a little bit of music over dinner or breakfast or whatever and that will let me do that Okay, so this radio is nearly ready to go back in this, this hole now, um, but I wanted to show you quickly. I've made up some leads using these male and female bullet connectors, just the little crimp connectors. Um, so I've got an assortment of things going on here. First of all, I've taken um, a positive feed and a negative feed straight off of the radio to power the subwoofer. Subwoofer isn't fitted yet, that goes down. Um, and that's all been threaded through to the floor area. I've got my subwoofer outputs, the RCA outputs um, here. That's also going down to the floor area. Um, I've basically bridged uh, between my ignition power and permanent power with a single push switch. So when that's on, and it's, and it's rated uh, appropriately, so the switch will be able to take the power throughput. Um, and I'm going to fit that on the dashboard in a minute once this is pushed back in. Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, to, fire up the, um, to fire up the subwoofer. The other thing I've done, of course, is you can see these little inline connectors using the purple wires um, for, for my back right and the, the green wires for my back left. Um, I've just tapped into those, tested those. Both speakers are working. They sound pretty good. For those tiny little cabinets, I thought it'd be a really tinny sound. They're not bad at all for, for rear speakers and once the subwoofer's plugged in, it's gonna sound awesome in here. So really pleased with that. That's just where I cut a wire I shouldn't and I put well, another crimp connector on it. Um, but it's, it's, it's coming together now. Um, and these two wires will go to the switch and when I connect them together now, yeah, even with the ignition off, I'll show you briefly, it will fire up the radio. There we go, I'm just holding it, but there you go. The switch will do its job, and then it should cut straight to radio, which is now coming out of six speakers. So I've got tweeters in the front, and I've got the sound in the front in, in the door speakers as well, and now two rear speakers, so it's really coming together. Now let's add, add some sub bass. Right, so I'm at the end of the install. I know it feels like a bit of a jump, but because this is going to be different for every single system that's fitted, there was a lot of stuff I was doing that just wasn't going to be relevant for this video. When it comes to tracing the wire, I showed you earlier how I was making all my connections. It's really easy on the Ducatos, once you've got the stereo out, to find a void, a gap, sorry, right down the back that goes from floor level right up to this area. There's loads of ways down. And there's even little kind of uh, openings around the bottom where I did fit the subwoofer in the end that allow you to run all those cables in there really, really neatly. So the first thing that I fitted that I was talking about was this permanent power switch. I didn't want a radio that just only worked when you had the ignition on because let's face it, in camper vans we're often on hookup anyway and if we're on hookup both of our batteries are being maintained charged so what's the point? You might as well not have to turn on the ignition get the fans whirring. I've just fitted a switch. So that switch is beautifully sighted just next door to the auxiliary input and the USB connection that I use to fit my 
um, Apple CarPlay, and you can see Apple CarPlay is coming up here. This system now recognizes the Apple CarPlay. So yeah, have a look at this. So this is Apple CarPlay. Now, Apple CarPlay basically puts some of the apps from your app um, from your Apple phone onto your car display. This is touch screen, so you've got mapping obviously there, you've got a list of whatever's playing, which is amazing. And then here, a bit like your home screen, this one's got the Pioneer button, so you can go back to Pioneer. Um, you've also got obviously your phone, um, your maps, your music, Google Maps, BBC Sounds, um, you name it. Zoom for goodness sake, WhatsApp, Spotify, YouTube music, you can literally, Waze is my favourite, you can actually dictate messages and it will send them. Um, it's absolutely incredible and designed to be safe to use when you're, when you're in the car. So yeah, if I go back to Pioneer there, it will just take me back to Pioneer. And then on this unit, you can see here, these are everything that you've got. Um, Bluetooth audio, uh, digital radio, auxiliary input, which is plugged in down by my switch. You've got AV input, I've never used that. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. You can have rear cameras built into it. It will still even give you the album artwork of whatever's playing at the time. Um, so yeah, normal radio as well, goes without saying. And up here, DVD slot, so you can actually watch DVDs on this thing if you just want a simple solution, something to, to watch in your camper. I love on this system as well how you can make individual adjustments to the, uh, to, to the individual speakers, including sub or rear, whatever, um, or you can just choose the position, so an equal position for everyone, off or for the passenger, for the driver. You can totally make it very quickly a, a bespoke uh, audio experience. I mean, I think there's a newer version out now. I'll post links to both this version, I can find it, and probably just the newer version. It's brilliant because you've got Apple CarPlay built into it. And, and you could see there, just with the settings I was playing with, the settings on this thing is touchscreen, which I find really intuitive. So anyway, that's it. Let me just show you where I did mount the subwoofer. Um, it's screwed to the floor with two screws. Um, there's a quick release connector on the back. So if I needed to move this mat, which to be honest, I never have, I only, uh, hoover it in location, then you would just remove those two Phillips head screws quickly, whip it out, disconnect the connector and you can pull the mat out. Um, but yeah, you can see how I've mounted it hopefully here. Oh, there's a wire in front of the lens, sorry about this people. Can you see there, there's just a little bracket. I'm really pleased with those. I think they're a really nice match to the interior and you can see also the trunking to the left of the TV there, that's all worked. So no, really, really happy with this install. Um, so yeah, if you think of doing something similar, get some extra speakers, get a bass thing in your car or in your camper, and it will make a massive, massive difference to your driving experience.